Hello ladies, welcome back to Music and Beauty TV. Thank you so much for subscribing and checking out my content. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how I achieved this crochet braid look. I'm featuring hair from Equal Free Tress. It is the Aruba Curl 20 inch long. I'm gonna be using three packs, a little bit more than three packs of this. And I was blessed with this hair by samsbeauty.com. They sent it to me for a review. So if you want to get your hands on some of this hair at the end of this video, make sure you go to samsbeauty.com. So right now I'm sectioning my hair off so that you guys can see my braid pattern for this style. I'm gonna be doing a middle part closure. So when doing crochet braids, you have to start out with the foundation of cornrows, which is what I'm doing right here. I'm not using too much hair. I'm using like semi-small braids, especially for the closure area. My front two braids right here in the center are gonna be where I do my, my invisible part closure, uh, which I will show you guys in detail later on in the video. But basically, I want these braids to be kind of small. Typically, when you braid your hair down for crochet braids, you don't want the braids to be super tight because you want there to be room underneath the braid to stick the crochet hook. I did these a little bit tighter than the rest of the braids are going to be just because I really want this closure to stay intact as long as possible. And I know how to do it pretty well, so I won't have much trouble sticking the hook through. This is not a feed-in cornrow. You can do a feed-in cornrow. My hair is kind of like soft and... It just like slips out of braids a lot easier than more coarse textured hair. So I usually like to do a standard cornrow. And as you can see right here, I crisscrossed the braids and now I'm going to continue to braid them down toward, toward the back of the crown of my head because whenever you're doing a crochet braid closure, you always wanna crisscross toward the back of whatever part you're creating. That way, once you hook all the hair in, there's not just one consistent part going down the middle of your head. It looks like it kind of fills itself in. So I'm gonna proceed and just do more braids that are going backward, and I'm going to be crisscrossing some of them. The reason why I did crisscrosses throughout some of the areas of the top is because I had the intention on making two to three different closure areas. That way I can flip my hair from side to side. But by the time I was finished with this style, I did not feel like, like making closures. Whenever you do the closure part of this style, it takes a little bit longer and I was dog tired y'all. But it's a good thing I did the braid pattern like this because I can always go back in with the extra hair and make closures when I feel like it. So if you are only gonna have one closure area, then once you do the crisscross braid, wherever that closure is going to be, you can pretty much do the rest of them straight back. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side just so I get the top half of my hair braided down. And the reason why is because now I'm gonna end up joining all of these braids together to create bigger braids going down the back. But this is just to show you the area that I want to do the closures. As you can see, one of them I did one straight back braid before I did the next closure area just because when I wear that closure, I want it to be a little bit more of a deep part. Before I do the braids in the middle, I'm gonna do the two edge braids. These are the perimeter braids. For my hair, it's really short, so I'm adding extra synthetic hair. But basically, just make sure you do two perimeter braids that follow the entire perimeter of your head because once you crisscross those in the back, it's gonna give you that closure in the back so that you have hair that goes all around your head. I just feel like it makes the style more comfortable to wear, especially as time goes on. And now I'm just doing all the rest of the braids, braiding them straight back, joining them together when I can so it's not like a whole bunch of braids. Now I'm gonna go in with the needle and thread and I'm just gonna stitch the tail ends of these braids down. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this but just to show you guys a couple of visuals so you see how it's done. Some people don't do this part. Some people just crochet the hair in and as they're hooking the hair in, then they're hooking the braids together. But I've had clients report to me that they really don't like that. So I've never tried it on myself because it doesn't seem like the most secure way to tie down all of my hair underneath. And just in case it did start to come out, I don't even want to take the chance of getting annoyed. So I just stitch them all down.
And here is the first pack of the hair. I've never worn a full head of hair this color before, which is why I wanted to try it out in front of you all. You guys can let me know what you guys think about this color. Honestly, it's okay. It's not gonna hurt my feelings because I'm not attached to this color. I just wanted to try something new. I feel like it's fitting for fall. So here we go. I'm sectioning off little tiny pieces of hair. I just wanted to show you guys like how small this piece of hair is. It's not the tiniest as it's going to be once I get to the front, but you wanna get a small amount of hair, slide the hook underneath the braid, attach the hair into the hook, slide it back through, and then you're going to knot this hair four times at least. Now, the reason why I really like the Aruba Curl from Freetress is because contrary to some of their other curl patterns, this hair is not that silky. It has kind of like a, a coarse feel to it, but it's still soft enough to appear shiny and pretty, and it definitely doesn't feel disgusting or anything, but it's coarse enough to where it doesn't like slide apart really easy. Sometimes I deal with crochet hair that I feel like I have to knot 15 times to make it not come unraveled and it's really annoying. So you either have to do a whole bunch of knots with other more silkier textured hair or you have to do smaller pieces of hair, which takes forever. This style already takes a few hours, so imagine if I had to break all of these pieces in half. And yes, I'm just realizing that it's extremely late <laughs> and I'm gonna be up all night doing my hair. So, you know, just getting a little caffeine in my system with this hot tea and we're gonna get back to work. So I'm just showing you guys run through. I'm literally, I can't see what I'm doing. I don't really think I need to. I'm just feeling for space that's available, sticking the hook underneath and attaching the hair, looping it four times every time and just filling in this space until I finish the first bundle of hair. And this is what it looks like once the first pack of hair is fully installed in my head. Now I'm gonna go into the second pack of hair, do the exact same thing, and I'm gonna work my way all the way up till I get to the top of my crown because I wanna use an entire pack in the front area. Actually, once you'll see at the end of this video how it looks, it does look really full, but I'm glad that I have extra hair on deck because I'm gonna wanna go through afterward and probably add more pieces. Happy dance, okay, we almost done, Woo. <laughs> I was really just happy because, yeah, I was tired. Oh, I forgot to show you guys, I had put this oil on my scalp, so I just added some more for demonstration, but this is the scalp cocktail from WeaPro.net. Check out WeaPro.net and get you some scalp cocktail little update on time and now we're gonna get started with the closure in the front before I proceed with the rest of the hair in the front I'm gonna do the closure first this okay. tends to require me to place every strand extremely close together so typically you're gonna have more hair in the closure area than you do for any other braid toward the front so I'm starting out by sticking the hook underneath this braid as so and instead of grabbing both strands of hair and knotting it four times I'm only grabbing one strand of hair and knotting it twice and then flipping the other piece over. Once you do this over and over and over, you start to see how you get that invisible part effect. Now, since this hair is light brown or like blonde, basically dark blonde, and my hair is black, then it's definitely not as seamless of a closure as it would be had I been installing black hair. But the idea is for it to look like it's natural, like it's yours and it's growing out of your scalp. I'm gonna proceed following this method. Um, I'm only knotting these ones two times. When I get to the other side, I actually experiment it with knotting them three times. Uh, I just wanted to like get an idea as to how different it might be when I actually wear the style. When I do my client's hair, I usually just like feel for what seems to be the most effective depending on the type of hair they bring me. But at least two times you have to knot it. Three times might be preferred, but sometimes too many knots in the hair that's showing in the front if they begin to loosen up or unravel, then they're gonna show a lot more than, than less knots. So just be mindful of that when you're doing your closure piece. Also pay attention to the direction that I'm sliding the crochet hook underneath the braid in. So basically you need to slide it in the opposite direction that you want the hair to fall. So if I want the hair to fall down to the left side of my face, then I'm going to stick the needle up, heading in the right direction underneath that braid so that when I pull the hair through and knot it, then the hair will fall 
on the appropriate side to create the closure. This is what it looks like if you open the hair up. One side has the knots and the other side does not. If I were to pull the hair on the right all the way over, I could pull those knots underneath the braid, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna keep the knots on the left side of the braid. So you see how full this looks already? I haven't even added any hair to the braids underneath this closure area. And this side of the head already looks full enough to be complete. And that's why it's important to do your closure area first. Number one, you wanna make sure you have enough hair to close it off. Number two, you wanna make sure that you have a benchmark to go off of when you begin to add more hair throughout the rest of your braids. So on this side, I am doing three knots as you can see. Make sure if you decide to do three knots that you pull as you go. Because the thing about doing three knots is that the second knot tends to knot up really quickly. So if you're not knotting it, like pulling it really snug as you go, if you just decide to pull it all really long and then you think you're just gonna tighten it and it's gonna be a knot, you're gonna end up getting a knot like a few inches away from where it needs to be. Because once you loop that hair twice, it tends to want to knot right away. So you can't do it too far from where you want it to end. I really hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just do it. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So for demonstration purposes, I wanted to try this. And in the end, they both look the same on both sides, but I'm gonna wear it and test out to see how they both last. A couple of disclaimers. This invisible knot method looks so much better when you use more coarse textured hair. And you can do all of this looping with your crochet hook, as I tend to do when I'm working with clients. But if you're doing it on yourself, like me, for some reason it may feel a little bit easier to use your fingers. That way you don't make as many mistakes because you need your visibility to be really good when you're using your hook. So now I'm going through and I'm maintaining smaller strands of hair since I am toward the front. Another thing if you guys didn't notice, um, I'm kind of like sticking a strand of hair just before the braid actually starts. I'm just sticking it into like my hair. Just because in case this loosens up, I don't want you to be able to see the knots of my braids. It's already bad enough that you can see I have black hair underneath this blonde, but I can deal with that. I just don't want you to also be able to see the knots of my braids. And as so you can see, there is space in between this hair because like I said, I didn't want to make it too full, but I did want to make it full enough to where if I decide to pull it back or do anything, it won't look completely like ratchet. But ultimately, I'm gonna need to go into some of these areas and fill them in more if I decide to actually wear a side part. And this is how it looks once all the hair is installed. It's extremely fluffy, extremely big. If you like wearing your hair super big like this, long, no bangs, do as you please, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim some of this hair toward the front because I wanted to frame my face a little bit better. I'm just taking my shears. I'm not pulling this hair until it's straight and then cutting. I'm like just very loosely tugging on it and then trimming as I go. Because it's curly hair, you actually don't have to pull it at all. But I just have a tendency to do that because I feel like it gives me a better grip or something. But if you don't pull it at all and you kind of just trim, that may actually yield better results. Those ends, you're gonna constantly need to trim the ends of this hair because it's gonna constantly shed or just knot up towards the end, so keep that in mind. And this is the finished look. I added a little bit of mousse to my hair. I didn't wanna make it super flat. I actually like it to be kind of big and fluffy, so that's what I did. I am rocking my middle part closure. I hope you guys like how this turned out. I actually love it, <laughs> but I'm gonna see how I feel as time goes by. If you have any questions about this style that I didn't explain already, please leave your questions in the comments below. I haven't forgotten about the giveaway I told you guys in my last video. I'll be announcing the winner next week, so make sure you guys come back next week to find out who is the winner of the jumbo shower cap I showed off in my last video haul. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. God bless you, and I'll see you on the next video.